Hey everyone, I'm Andrea with McCown Contracting and this is my brother Ben and today I'm super excited to bring you a video all about using drones in the oil and gas industry. What? Today we have with us up from Texas, Jonathan Denton, the owner of DW Digital Imagery and Associates. What? I'm super excited. Thank you so much for being there. This is great. Thank you uh, for having me. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm looking around here and I, I think I missed the memo for uh, aviator sunglasses. What's going on here? Oh, well, uh, we're talking about flying. So we got a little Top Gun theme going on since we're talking about flying. Ben, I will even let you be Maverick. Wait a minute. Doesn't he die in the movie? No, no, no. Goose dies in the movie. Oh, so you want your brother to die? Uh, sometimes. Okay, anyway. Uh, we'll move on. So, anyway, let's talk about different ways we can use drones in the oil and gas business. Uh, there's actually so many ways. I was even really interested when we were talking about how many different ways this can be done. So, I'm super excited. I know that one reason we can use um, drones in the oil and gas industry is through mapping. Um, so mapping for spill prevention and things like that. So go ahead and let me know what we got going on here, what you brought. You brought all these toys. I'm super excited. Very let, nice let, toys. Let us know what's yes. going on. So over here um, we have, um, this is the DJI Mavic 2 series. This is actually the dual advanced and it can map in either regular, um, you know, regular color images on your camera or thermal. And basically, you could just take it out and program it to fly over a section of field or oil and gas area. It'll actually take shots, and then you can take that data back home, put it in any software you like, whether it's drone deploy, site scan, uh, drone to map uh, with ESRI, and you can make your own mapping out of it. So you can do your own measurements. You can even do things like shooting in ground control points down to, say, two centimeter to one centimeter accuracy and elevation and location. So you can do some really nice intuitive analytics yeah, with just mapping. So cool. Nice, so can you, you know, with these being so high tech, are you able to pick up any kind of releases or spills when you're doing the mapping? Very good, yes, for sure. Um, this particular drone right here, the thermal one, we can use this to fly over and look with the thermal camera to see the vapor cloud as it's extruding from whatever it's leaking from so we actually see that going on to where we can take temperatures as well once we find out where the leak is coming from then we can move over to oh, this drone right here this is very fancy this is uh yeah, yeah this is uh, a dji um, m300 oh. with a hydrocarbon sensor on top of it wow. which will read back parts per billion or parts per million concentration of your vapor cloud that is oh leaking God. so that is super yeah. awesome so okay so you're you're on a you're on a project and let's say the the operators they know they've got a leak somewhere right right they don't know where the leak is kind of how would you be you know setting this up for the operator how would this work to go in there because yep. i mean that's we see them all the time all the time operators have got leaks um in fact we had even a situation down in the southeast part of oklahoma where they didn't know where the leak was coming from, several operators. So how, right. do, how would we talk this through? This would uh, be your go-to guy right here. Okay. Okay. Um, guy. This is about a $7,000 drone. Oh. Again, it's a DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Don't Dual touch Advanced. It, <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually fly up really close. You can get into close quarters with this okay. to see what's going on, where the leaks are. You can even zoom in. I think it's 32 times magnification on this particular camera. Okay which is real far out, so you don't even necessarily have to get close. But once you see um, where that leak is coming from, and you see that there is a cloud coming up, then oh, you cool. have this bigger one with the sensor, you can fly into the top and actually take your readings through this um, this measure nozzle here, right here on the front. Okay. And uh, yeah, you know and what you got. And this information gets back to the operator pretty quickly. Yes, I mean, it does. It's, yeah, it's yeah. almost, yeah. It's instant pretty instant. To know, right, exactly where that's coming from. and that. I can't just imagine the amount of time this could save an operator. Oh, I mean, you could go in there and try to figure things out, but something like this, I mean, bam, you know, and you can get your, yeah, 
you start getting it fixed and everything, and all the information you need and what you're looking at and everything. I think it's it's so cool. So uh, okay, so some you know mapping projects. Let's kind of go back to that because acquisitions are huge right now. A lot of uh, clients that we have are they're doing a lot of purchases and maybe they want to see a field really well pretty quickly. I mean, you could do something really quickly oh, yeah. without maybe somebody having to drive you to could, all these different areas. You could launch. Uh, uh, even this um, comes with a mapping software as well and a camera. Obviously, this is more expensive. This right. is uh, cheaper, but you can get the same thing done. Uh, you would basically set up uh, something in DJI Fly or Drone Deploy, put in your map that you would um, you know, plan out, whatever height you want to fly, cut her loose. She'll be done in about 20 minutes. You bring it back. You take the photos off the drone. You put it into your photogrammetry software. I like to use Drone Deploy a lot. That's okay. one of my go-tos, and I also use Sight Scan. And then um, my third one is uh, Esri's Drone to Map, and I'll put those uh, pictures in there, and I will actually stitch a map together. And then from there, I can also build a 3D point cloud, which I can use for elevations. Now, sometimes those elevations aren't very accurate, so I have to bring in ground control points that I shoot in with my Trimble, and I can get those put into the photos. And when I stitch those in with a latitude and longitude and a height, yeah. then that'll actually suck the map down and make it more, I guess you could say global centric to the earth's surface of what you're actually seeing so that your measurements are within two centimeters. Very impressive, can be done very quickly. Um, pretty much anybody can learn how to do this. Very cost effective and saves you a lot of time. Oh my gosh, sure. it sounds like a huge time saver. So. You, I mean, you guys are like, you're big time. I'm going to say that. You're big time. <laughs> I feel very, <laughs> like you came over here to visit us, so I'm super excited. Um, so qualifications, I mean, you really have to know how to, I mean, I couldn't, even if I bought this, I wouldn't even know what to do with yep. it. Um, <laughs> like, you would need to go through some sort of yeah. uh, formal training. Um, we do offer that as well. Yeah, because I, you and I talked about mm -hmm. that, that you actually offer the training for these. So you could even have an operator where it might be more economical for them to purchase one of these. You could train assist on site. in that train. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. amazing. That's super cool. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So the, they, they go through the training. And, and that will teach them how to use all the equipment uh -huh. and, and then, different rules and regulations. Yes. So obviously these things need to be Then different. they'll need to go through their operator uh, training uh, certificate program, the 107. I actually have one here in my license uh, or in my wallet. So I'm gonna hold this up so everybody can see. But this is what makes you official at the end of the day so you won't get in trouble by the yes. FAA. So we also okay. provide classes on how to Read weather charts, uh, read notice to airmen from the FAA uh, guidance uh, website, learn about airspace requirements, learning about how do you uh, get qualification to fly into um, controlled airspace around airports, and even critical infrastructure. Um, I don't know the laws here in Oklahoma, but in Texas, they just released the critical infrastructure laws that now make it harder for you to fly near substations, pipelines, uh, water treatment facilities so you have to get extra clearance either from the Department of Transportation or the entities that run and own those operations wow. so oh that's awesome yeah. no that I think that's all that's fantastic because I do know operators might look at this and go you know hey maybe I want to buy one of these instead I've got you know hundreds of facilities it might be more you know economic and then they can get the training I mean you're like a one-stop shop yes so I, I love that that's so awesome Ben now, Jonathan, you didn't get all dressed up for nothing. I want to see at least one of these bad boys fly. I figured we were getting yeah. there. Yeah, I'm going to fly Ben's this one right excited. here. So we're going to turn it on. Okay. We're going to turn her on. Watch your beard, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> You guys ever watched Dallas in the 80s? Dun, no, I haven't. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you're kind of, you might be a little young. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, dude, you're, um, you're 105 degrees. Andrea is, yeah, 97. You are...
she's showing you're colder than her. coming out here and bringing all of your really no fancy toys. It's fun. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, Ben, for not getting your beard caught in there. Yeah. That would have been horrible. Okay, so um, thank you guys so much. We talked about a little bit about using these in uh, the oil and gas industry. Um, guys, follow us on YouTube. Look up his website. It's super cool. His Facebook has got so many awesome stuff on it. It's really cool stuff. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh,